I'm Brent Adams. I've waited for years for a people's movement to spark, and once it did, I wanted to be front and center with my camera. I think what I'm struggling with is just the competing, you know, the competing forces that are present here in the camp. We've got hunger, we've got food, we've got sanitation issues, you know, social, you know, very big social issues around alcoholism and addiction that leak into the occupy, the space that we're occupying, and, and security issues. So it's, it's it's manifold. Overall, I think it's in Santa Cruz actually been going pretty smoothly so far. I kept a, I kept quiet for quite a few weeks. But I, I initially uh, started cooking here in the camp kitchen, and I noticed uh, an enormous number of uh, generally younger people who, for whom life, you know, right now is a struggle, and they're hungry. So I stepped in to that role. In general assembly meetings every day, we were bringing up a number of, uh, you know, identified issues, and so I felt compelled to speak out on camp issues, and uh, I just wanted to bring, you know, I just felt like I wanted to bring a voice to. Uh, to the turmoil. I'm homeless now, and uh, I've been homeless before, so I can identify with uh, the groups of people that are, you know, are assembled in the streets. In the last week, we've seen Occupy Oakland, Occupy Wall Street's encampments basically wiped out. A strategy needs to be developed to allow the, the Occupy <clears throat> groups themselves to be able to, to emerge from however they're housing themselves if it's not an encampment and continue the very important work that the General Assemblies are, are uh, articulating. Finding a more permanent location with, with uh, facilities for cooking and sanitation and sanctuary. I think in Hawaii, the, on the big island, is a place called Sanctuary. Today we have pasta a la marinara with Picorino Romano. It's going to be good. I'm in favor of the occupiers because what we have is we have corporations that in, instead of investing in jobs are investing in lobbyists to get tax breaks so they can move their money offshore and, and middle class America is getting screwed. So I'm out here to do my part. The list of complaints including 200 pounds of shit at the vets hall had come from county administrators. It was time to meet our accusers. Dinah Phillips often seen deriding the occupation. Lieutenant Wilson represents the deputies that raided the camp. So Dinah, this is uh, some folks that are uh, self-identifying as occupied settlers. 200 pounds of poop that were found over near the veterans' home. I don't know who found it, and I'm not sure who reported it. Um, I don't know that anyone has associated it. I've never drawn a direct line on that. The county also claims human waste has piled up at the Veterans Hall on Front Street ever since the camp opened. They included it in a news release about the camp and say it's a pretty big coincidence. Occupiers say they have nothing to do with because it. Because there is a temporal connection. We have not said that there's a direct line. The one thing we don't know is how much it weighed. And, you know, we were sort of thinking, I wonder what that all would be. 200 pounds of human waste was discovered around the empty veterans hall. The 200 pounds of human waste were in the media that portrays it as connected to Occupy Santa Cruz. I don't know who did it. You guys don't know who did it. And you're associating it in the media with Occupy because of the temporal connection. That's what we should be associating with Occupy Santa Cruz. The county implies the poopy problem started when the Occupy tents went up. But you know, here's what I'm wondering. So I'm wondering if this is going to be like a question and answer session about feces. So really, if you'd like to know a little bit more, like what I was hoping is to talk about, we've got like 100 people here. And there's 10 of you here. And you're here for some reasons, right? And my guess is you want to stay here and continue to educate the public, advance your message, and do something productive. I don't know if you're going to get there talking about food. I think, you know, we might have a productive dialogue where we talk about, like, for instance, I saw some things when I walked by today at noon. I noticed when I walked by, I looked up to the courthouse steps, that there was a sign that said, Occupy Santa Cruz, against the doors. 
you know, now things are tied to it. Um, now those were emergency exits. I also saw some food being served on the sidewalk. Now, some people might think it's disruptive when they can't use a public sidewalk because on a sidewalk is something that's so large it takes up a good deal of the sidewalk. And I wasn't able to use the public sidewalk. These things that you're mentioning are, are small, are small items. Um, we have some concerns that are pretty big, like the citations that we've been getting, like the arrests that have been made, um, and like our property being stolen by the Sheriff's Department. We do not have permission to be out there. We do not have permission to be on this property. We have not chosen to enforce that. We know that you're here for your first amendment calls whether we agree with the messages or not. We believe in that, and that's important, and we do not um, want to keep that, but we are the custodians of this property. There is a feeling that there is a strategy being employed to associate and occupy with things that will cause disgust in the public mind. My advice is that you, is that you, is that you, you exercise your First Amendment assembly rights on the steps here, sleep somewhere else. I'm here because we want, the Sheriff's Office wants to avoid the situation where we use force to enforce the laws that we want. And we're law enforcement officers. We reserve the right to use, you know, force when it's appropriate. The city isn't doing it. The county isn't doing it. Nobody's doing it. What's and how do you define doing it? Fixing the, the issues. It just, people keep on getting moved around, and now, yeah, and now here's, here comes Occupy Santa Cruz, and so we become the scapegoat for it. But it just doesn't seem like this isn't our problem, this is society's problem that nobody is dealing with. And at least, because you're hearing from folks who are camping here, that, who are trying to do the mediation and trying to do the nonviolent ways of helping, of dealing with these issues, we want to work with you on it. <laughs> so is that what you're looking for is? is training of your people. And then resources at this site. And I think we, have, we need to talk not only to the county, but also to nonprofits and other, and other folks in the community. But, but there really ought to be a more proactive um, uh, strategy. This meeting between a group of tired activists and seasoned professionals yielded little, but it did allow them to see and hear each other. Now I'm going to worry more. Thank you. After Thanksgiving, the Occupy hosted Rave Against the Machine and the community brought 200 pounds of food. Commander X, day number 52 of Occupy Santa Cruz, and we are about to have our General Assembly and then one hell of a dance party. Day after Thanksgiving, everybody's all fattened up. I gotta go live on the radio now. You can see that thing happening right here, see? So I gotta talk to the people, see? All right, bye-bye. Many had gone to visit family, but for those who remained, Occupy Santa Cruz is family. Local citizens visited throughout the holiday to share food and community and to check up on the occupation, which had suffered a barrage of negative media throughout the month. The resilience of the occupiers was inspiring to many. The deputies continued to do their job. Try to hold on to the last vestige of civilization. Cheers, Occupy Santa Cruz. The sound system was loud enough to be heard in the jail across the street. Some of Santa Cruz's favorite DJs played. It feels good to dance and celebrate during an occupation of the public commons. Brings 
home the concept of for the people. Frequent emergency calls and perceived increase in violence had an effect on the gender diversity. A safe space for women and queers had become more desired. Porta potty news had become a media obsession bordering on porta potty porno. Here, units are shuffled around to maximize their use. The baseline fact is that people must go to the bathroom. Offering plentiful places for them to go is an important city and county function. These signs here have been bushwhacked by a certain few people in the GA. I guess that's you. You make decisions about what goes on on the front line every day here, but none of you are here with us. You don't take care of what goes on here at night. We've got enough problems without having snakes in our own camp doing this kind of thing at night, and then blaming the police and blaming the tweakers for things that they are deliberately doing to the occupation, ongoing, continuing. See that it's up on the video already. What's been happening? Okay? Just check it out for yourself. I'm very sorry to interrupt you, ladies and gentlemen. So sorry. Come on and wake up. It's time to shake up the sky. They're trying to break us. Can't you hear our cry? We gotta rock them, we gotta occupy. They say we don't rock them, it was a fighting point. Where are the leaders? Is this a five class war? They get the bailout, but then they just want more, 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 more. They get the feeling that the odds are sitting all with them. Stealing our souls are wearing thin. Come on and wake up, it's time to look at the line. They're trying to take us, it's time to testify. We got a shot on, we got a good Trouble in the school house, trouble on the workhouse floor. We gotta rock em, we gotta occupy. occupy. 